Hi, HartfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Wednesday morning, December 27th. A lot to talk about this morning. First of all, in the longer term, it looks like we'll have a, a continuation of the stratospheric warming event that began in late November, but it kind of goes to a, a different level now. It uh, really looks like it'll uh, kick into gear over the next week or two. And this stratospheric warming event certainly raises the chances for some colder than normal weather conditions across the central and eastern U.S., let's say later in the month of January going into February. Uh, there's usually a lag of a few weeks to maybe as many as several weeks behind a stratospheric warming event. That's why what's going on now and really will intensify over the next week or so uh, should have ramifications later January going into February. And, a stratospheric warming event certainly also raises the chance of some extreme cold and we'll uh, certainly monitor the prospects for that later in the month of January going into February. This is a look at the last 30 days, a loop of the 10 millibar way up in the stratosphere, the temperature anomalies in uh, the, the north uh, pole region right here, 90 degrees latitude, and you can see uh, again, a loop over the last 30 days from late uh, November into about Christmas time, late December. And you can see the uh, warmer than normal temperatures that kind of exploded across the northern part of the world here, uh, the uh, north, the polar region in the northern hemisphere. And again, this is going to really intensify over the next week to 10 days or so. We'll take a look at some forecast maps in a moment here, but uh, there'll be kind of a whole new level of this stratospheric warming over the next week or so. And again, it could have big time ramifications, central and eastern U.S. later January going into February. Well, let's take a look at some forecast map maps with respect to this stratospheric warming event. Again, it's really gotten underway latter part of November uh, for the last 30 days or so, certainly there has been a stratospheric warming and it intensifies quite dramatically over the next week to 10 days or so. This is the current look at the temperature pattern, not the anomalies, the actual temperatures at the 10 millibar level. Again, this is the stratospheric level. What we're looking at is kind of a top-down view here. This is the North Pole right in this area right now. You can see the temperature right now oh somewhere in this range right here minus 65 to minus 60 celsius right now over the north pole notice here some orange is showing up on the other side of the pole that's uh, 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 the next the beginning phase of stratospheric warming right here you notice that in the current uh, situation right now the u.s by the way is right over here on this particular map now let's move forward here clear the deck right here and we'll go out five days and look at the change here in five days we have again the north pole right in this region right here in that area of warming that is uh, uh, depicted right now intensifies quite a bit right here in five days now let's go out ten days and look at that it shifts right over the north pole again the north pole right in this little circle area right here now we're talking about minus 20. So the temperature at the North Pole, as depicted here by the GFS model run, over the next 10 days goes from right in this area, minus 60 Celsius to minus 20 Celsius. Indeed, a, a, a quite a dramatic stratospheric warming event. Now the polar vortex that typically sits near or over the North Pole this time of the year Kind of get shifted off. It kind of gets stretched out. Uh, we'll go out another a few days here and watch what happens here. And uh, here we go. At, uh, uh, that warmer area now kind of shifts over into the North America uh, side of the northern hemisphere. And again, a stretched out polar vortex. And that certainly can have ramifications on the central and eastern U.S. in terms of temperatures later in January going into February. Basically, stratospheric warming event uh, can unleash cold air masses that uh, typically reside over the high latitudes this time of the year with some stratospheric warming. Uh, you, you, you initially get some uh, uh, colder conditions 
in the troposphere over the high latitudes, and then that can be unleashed into the uh, uh, central and eastern states. And indeed, that is on the table with this upcoming intensification of the stratospheric warming. And it, usually, again, there's a several week delay or a time lag uh, to uh, actually get the impact from a stratospheric warming event. So we're talking later in January, going into the month of February. Well, now let's get back to the continental U.S. We have a very interesting weather pattern going forward here because it is an active weather pattern, basically progressively colder uh, for the eastern U.S. We certainly stay mild for the next few days with a lot of rainfall today and tonight. For example, in the Mid-Atlantic region, the northeast U.S., and it stays uh, very gloomy right for the uh, through the end of the work week and relatively mild. It gets a little bit colder this weekend in the Mid-Atlantic region, the Northeast U.S., and then even colder later next week. And we have as many as three or four threats we'll have to monitor over the next several days. This is a look at the ensemble run of the GFS from last night at 0Z and what we're looking at, the 500 millibar height anomaly uh, fields here. And very, very strong upper level ridge and higher heights to normal. Uh, over the western part of the Hudson Bay region of Canada and just to the west of there. Notice the deep upper level trough centered over the central U.S. Now, we're going to move forward quickly here. Here's the first threat for the Mid-Atlantic region, northeast U.S., right here at, uh, at, uh, beyond the rainfall from today. This just kind of rotates slowly around and uh, could certainly produce some rain or snow showers Friday, Friday night time frame, not all that much cold air, uh, for, certainly for the I-95 corridor region, uh, but the, those higher elevations, places like West Virginia can get some decent snowfall out of this. Again, this is the first threat beyond today in the Friday, Friday night, Saturday time frame. Now, we'll move forward here another few days, and here we go, another kind of an upper level low showing up here by the uh, early part of next week. This is New Year's Day. That's the next threat to monitor for the Mid-Atlantic region, the Northeast U.S., early next week, let's say Monday, Tuesday time frame. Again, uh, it'll be uh, only marginal cold air around, so even if this does uh, develop into a surface low pressure area, it's certainly by no means a certainty that it would be snow in the Mid-Atlantic region. It's a close call here. Then we go out a little farther in time, and again, it kind of gets a little bit progressively colder next week. And I'd say around the 4th or so of uh, January. This is next Thursday or so, a little bit more than a week away from right now. You're looking at another potential threat here to monitor. And again, this time will probably be a little bit colder, progressively colder next week. So this has a little bit more of a chance to produce some snowfall in the Mid-Atlantic region. This is maybe the third in a series of uh, waves of low pressure we'll have to monitor from late this week all the way now we're talking about the latter part of next week again january 4th next thursday time frame then we'll go out quickly uh, uh beyond that and there'll be another system that certainly uh, is way down the road here but uh, it's around january 9th january 10th january 11th and i think that's one that we'll have to watch uh, certainly uh, next week but here we go january 10th we're talking two weeks away from right now there's a bona fide system in here, and there'll be a decent amount of cold air in the Mid-Atlantic region. Right here is uh, perhaps the fourth in a series of uh, storm threats we'll have to monitor in the eastern U.S. over the next couple of weeks. This is, again, way out there in advance here, about two weeks from right now, January 10th. Now, at this particular time, look at what's happening here over Greenland. We have this... Uh, upper level ridging really intensifying over Iceland, over Greenland. This is Iceland right here. This is again two weeks away, but this is kind of an uh, interesting and an important uh, pattern change. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's really uh, what we call a negative NAO type of pattern here when we have higher heights to normal, uh, setting up higher pressure than normal over places like Greenland and Iceland. That certainly can uh, move into a position that allows some colder air masses to make their way from eastern Canada into the northeastern part of the country. So again, it looks like a couple of weeks away, we'll start to get a real negative NAO type of weather pattern setting up. 
and that'll have some big time ramifications in the central and eastern U.S. And speaking of the NAO, that's a teleconnection index known as the North Atlantic Oscillation that gives us a, a clue as to the temperature and pressure pattern over the North Atlantic. When it falls into negative territory this time of the year combined with a negative Arctic Oscillation, which we'll look at in a moment, that enhances the chance. It's usually pretty well correlated with that Greenland block, that high latitude blocking over Greenland, ice and with Iceland with higher heights to normal, higher pressures to normal over that part of North America. That in turn generally favors colder, stormier conditions across the eastern states. The red shows the forecast here going forward. Right now we're in positive territory with the NAO, but it slides into negative territory all the way out to oh, about January 10th or so right here. So certainly the trend is uh, uh, more and more negative as we get into the first and second week of January. And here is its closely related cousin, the Arctic Oscillation, uh, just now right, right around neutral level, but in the next 5 or 10 or 15 days or so, it slides farther into negative territory. So again, it's uh, showing up here as a, a more sustained negative NAO, negative AO type of pattern a week to two weeks away and uh, look for that high pressure ridging to start to intensify uh, 10 days, 14 days from now over Greenland, Iceland. That is generally a colder and stormier pattern for the eastern U.S. <coughs> well, let's wrap up with the surface forecast maps from the Zero Z run of the GFS. This is the operational or what, or what we call the deterministic run of the GFS, not the ensemble run, which we looked at earlier. A lot of rainfall today in the Mid-Atlantic region, Northeast U.S. It actually can become a little heavier at times here later in the day, early tonight, especially across the Delmarva Peninsula going into New Jersey. Mild, no chance of any snow associated with this. We're talking about high temperatures, maybe 50 to 55 degrees D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. And so, again, another gloomy day and another rain event for the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast U.S. Now, that upper level low that's spinning out over the middle part of the country kind of rotates around over the next 24 to 48 hours or so, and that will bring a low pressure area into the Mid-Atlantic region by the time we get to Friday afternoon, Friday evening or so. And it, uh, very likely to be cold enough for snow in those higher elevations of, let's say, West Virginia, where several inches of snow can accumulate uh, uh, only marginal cold air in the I-95 corridor region, so there can be some rain showers and outside chance that some snowflakes mix in. But basically, you got to get out to the real high elevations of West Virginia, maybe far western Virginia as well. And here is that first threat we talked about uh, beyond today for the Mid-Atlantic region, late Friday, Friday night time frame. Now, we'll go out a little farther in time. It gets uh, basically seasonably cold air for the upcoming weekend in the Mid-Atlantic region. Uh, pretty cold across the northern states here. Uh, this is Sunday, and by Monday there'll be another weak system here into the eastern states. We'll have to monitor it. It doesn't look all that impressive right here. And again, the cold air will be rather marginal for the I-95 corridor region. Maybe some rain or snow showers we'll have to deal with with this particular system early next week. This is the Monday, New Year's Day into Tuesday time frame. Something we'll monitor over the next few days. Again, definitely an active weather pattern. We'll have to take each system on its own here. This is all the way now into next Tuesday and Wednesday. And then we have a, a, another potential system that the GFS does not really emphasize right here. This is January 4th time frame. There's a low pressure area down over the Gulf of Mexico and it kind of pushes it off to the north and east. I'm not sure if I agree with that. It's something I think we'll have to monitor over the next several days. Again, we're talking about the latter part of next week. Now notice also this 540 line dropping all the way down into the Carolinas, cutting across uh, the south central states. In other words, kind of progressively colder uh, during uh, next week. So certainly if there is a system that can slide up along the eastern seaboard, better chance for snow in the mid-Atlantic region. Again, we're talking about January 4th time frame next Thursday or so. 
Then we'll kind of go out quickly in time into the, the, the uh, January 6th, January 7th time frame, kind of reinforcing cold fronts. And we're going way out in time here, all the way out to the 9th and 10th. But there'll, there'll be a potential system here. Uh, I think it's something we'll have to monitor along the eastern seaboard or along around the January 10th time frame. Again, we're talking way out there in speculation phase, but I think it's something uh, real that's kind of showing up on many model runs here. And, and the, uh, the switch to a negative NAO pattern kind of favors this idea. So this is way out there right now in speculation phase two weeks from today. Nonetheless, uh, uh, even though this is way out there in speculation phase territory, we do have an active weather pattern. We'll have to monitor numerous threats over the next week to 10 days or so, and uh, it looks like maybe out at least two weeks or so. So that's it for now. We'll continue to monitor the progress of stratospheric warming event that began late November and really intensifies over the next week to 10 days or so. It could have some big time ramifications on the temperature pattern across the central and eastern states later January going into February. That's it for now. For ArcFieldWeather.com, this has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.